before entering the Path Veil Experience. Path Veil Experience. Path Veil Experience. Path Veil Experience. Experience. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience. This, the compilation of Cuss Corner number 46. Reminder to all of you, smash the like button, sub to Mayo Media Network. And if you're feeling frisky, there is a Cuss Corner only audio podcast feed. You can sub to that down in the description right now. Let's go. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner, Cuss Corner. <laughs> People need to stop telling me I need to put my cards into my phone, okay? Look, I have one of those wallet phone things <laughs> where my cards are adjacent to my phone. It is no faster for me to open up my phone open up the app, pull up the card, and scan it, than it is for me to use my real card. Uh, it's it's technology, for the most part, for me, that doesn't make my life any more efficient, any faster. I, I think it, it, a lot of it is done for peacocky reasons, so that people can see me using my phone to tap a payment rather than use the card. Like If it works for you, great. But I carry a phone case that has a wallet attached to it. It works perfectly for me. I don't need to blend those two things. I'm doing all right. Jeff, do you know what he's talking about? Like the the phone case that also has all the cards in it? Yeah, so it, I have one of it, I have a phone case where when I pull the back up, I can put a couple cards in. Oh, no, we're, referring we're, to we're not talking about a couple cards. We're talking about an entire basically his phone is in his wallet and his wallet looks like my grandmother's wallet. <laughs> I have all my cards. I have all like several. But are my you cards. talking about people? You're anti people who scan their cards for payment. I'm not, on I'm not anti people. No, I'm not anti people doing that. I'm anti people telling me I need to do that. And it would. Why I don't do need to do it. Carry it's around because so it's much. no more convenient for me. That's why. Well, it's more convenient. Why do you carry you can... around so much? Yeah. Because I want to have all my cards at hand. I need to have. My, the, I want it all in one small compact place to have a spot for my driver's well, if, license. Well, if you want everything, my health card, oh, hold on. If my you want CAA everything card, in a small compact place that's easy to carry around, wouldn't it make more sense to put them all on your phone? Some of them you can't put on your phone. Which ones? Like your so Subway gift card? I can't put what my driver's license about? on my phone. I think that you can, actually. I don't think you can. I've that. never seen it. I, if, if you don't have it, it can't be. then, I'm, then it doesn't exist. So I just leave it. my driver's license in my car. That yeah. seems like a bad idea. That's where I keep mine too. Because what if you have to switch cars or any number? You should have it on you. You should nope. have your ID on you. Nope. I believe. I, mean, I, don't get ID for, ID. I don't get ID for anything. I'm old. It's just a good idea to have your ID on. You. Anyway, it's, and the, I have the, my cards. The payments it's are faster for me. The payments are faster, and we weren't trying to tell you to put you know put all your cards on, like your health card or whatever it might be. It's just like the amount of debit cards and credit cards that you carry around. It's just easier to put them on your phone. It's just as easy to have them right next to my phone. It's actually not, because then you have to take the card out to either put it in or put it in the tap. With the phone, you just go click, click, boom. With my card, I go beep, it's done. No, you don't. You actually, What's have, to, the most you actually have to pull out. You have to pull with. out your phone to get to your card, take your card out, and then pull it out and tap it. And the tap on the card, it doesn't really work all that well a lot of the time on the phone. Boom. High intensity. And it's just a double click. Boom. You don't even have to open up an app. The most useless card, like the card I use the least, yeah. Like, why would do you carry probably your... be my, my CAA card? Why don't um, you... I use my Costco card a lot. Why don't you leave? You can put your Costco card on your phone. That's not a problem. Uh, why don't you put your Costco Costco card in your car and your CAA card Cause... in your car? No, I want them on my person. On in your purse? No, on my person. In case I'm away from my car, you can still use C. I, for discounts like, are, and stuff. Do you still have your Blockbuster card? What's going on? No, I don't. I got rid of a lot of my cards. I just have the essentials now. I have like nine or ten cards in my wallet. Those are the essentials. <laughs> nine, or nine or ten. And, it, and Tim doesn't have multiple credit cards. No, I don't. I carry my essentials. I have the card that has my SIN number on it. Why do, you have, my, Why do you have that card? I carry my Costco Why? card so it doesn't get lost. I carry my Costco card. No, you card. keep that I at carry home. Wouldn't my that be? CAA card, if you don't want to, hold on. If you don't, card, if you don't want to, if you don't want to, if you don't, if your store, birth certificate. Gift, 
No, not my birth certificate. Why do you have I your SIN have, card on you? Why wouldn't you leave that at because home? Because it's a plastic. It's a plastic card. I don't. I, I want to make sure it's on me and it's safe when it's with me. That's the most dangerous thing to carry around to me. Leave that at home. Why well, keep it on my person? Well, you can. You what? can. You can lose your phone. You can lose your wallet. Job? <laughs> well, I've never lost my phone. You could though. You you know where you wouldn't lose it at home. Do you keep your sin on you in case you end up at the bingo hall and you want to apply for a job? No, but you ugh, no, I don't <laughs> think that works like that, man. That that would be such a glamorous life too. But anyway, I carry all my essential. It would be none you of know, these are essential. Jeff was Jeff was talking about the other day about the that he was at the C and E again. I was jealous as all get out. You also that he was living this glamorous life. You also thought that the C and E was glamorous, like a high class it's affair, not Tiff. the lowest it's place Tiff on without, earth. It's Tiff without the movies. That is gobsmacking, a gobsmack worthy comment. Like, but you go I'm, on about all the delicious types of food and stuff like that, and the delicious type of food. It's like. It's like deep fried Mars bars and yeah. like fair foods. But yet you're upset at the people who go to Subway there. Like you said, I, I think the people who go to like go to your state fair and get in line for a Subway sandwich are the weirdest people. I see. No, see, I can talk. I can talk myself into that one. Mainly because, I mean, one of the main reasons to go to these things would be like to bring my kids to go to the fair, whatever it might be. Maybe I'm not in the mood for cotton candy in deep fries Mars bars. Or maybe I've just like had one of those earlier, like the worst thing possible for me. And all the subways like not great. It's like the only thing that's green in the entire place. I guess. But then I see this family eating Le Box Orange, which is pizza, pizza, orange box. Nice. What's the matter with these people? Yeah, I, I don't. I'm get, jealous. I don't get going to a chain food store. I, like Subway would be the only one if it was the only like respectably right. healthy thing like, around. You're right. Like if you are like a Tom Brady sort of mindset guy, you're at the fair. You took your kids. You're not packing your own lunch. You'll just eat Subway. You'll suck that up. Uh, okay, maybe it's not as weird, but it's still weird. To I don't know. It's just like, yeah, come on. I, like, mean, listen, I wouldn't do it either. I, I'd suck it up. And anyway, I'm at the fair once, I'm not going every day. But to compare it to TIFF is like, you know, your state fair is the same class level as like the Cannes Film Festival. CNE is a, the Canadian National Exhibition is a national iconic event. So it is known state, coast to coast. I don't know about that. It is Canada's national exhibition. I mean, it's one of the few things Toronto really does at the national thing for. Is this CNE? It is a big deal. They have all those. It's foods. a carny. Those... It's a carny fest. It's, it's and quite you're a glamorous it like thing. High class. Like it is kind of. It is classy, isn't it? No, we went. We went to it. Do you remember this? We went to a makeshift casino, and I get and, why that. And, and how classy. how high class was that casino? The casino wasn't, but it was also a temporary makeshift casino. I, I, I don't think it's fair to judge the whole CNE on that. You would think. That if it was a high class affair and there was a casino portion of it, that the casino wouldn't be the world's lowest casino. Wasn't there know. a shooting at nighttime a couple like last year? At this the dregs of society go to this as well. You're not getting that at TIFF, Tim. I mean, people travel from all over Canada to go to see any. Like people, I don't know how what they're doing. No, and Paul, like when Paul I said like Paul said five, Paul said no. Jeff said no, and I said no. Oh, okay, well, I can say for a fact no. that it's true. Who? Because like, we you know five. one person no, who did it. We went on a is... family vacation when I was like four or five to the CNE. Were you in? We just, were you on vacation in Toronto and you went to the no, we, CNE? But we you... specifically went to Toronto to go to the CNE. This explains a lot. That sounds like the worst <laughs> vacation ever. <laughs> And like, what I remember of Toronto, it, it, it was really like fun. Wonderland. It was, like, re it was travel, really fun. If you're going to travel, you want to go on rides, you want to stay in Canada. Okay, I could see you going to Wonderland. Going to the CNE, it's just like, just wait for the state fair to come to your city. That's all it is. It's a very, I mean, obviously, like, you have different perceptions. I Like, when I was a kid, it didn't seem as low- as like grungy as it is now, but thing I probably wouldn't have noticed because my dad's I went every year my whole life, like with my dad and stuff. Um, 
I don't know. That shocks me to know people would actually travel to go to 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 ride a grungy carny ride. Yeah, I remember there being cool carnival rides and food, and I just remember it being fun. But you were also five years old, you said. You're right. What, I was. What wasn't fun besides going to bed when you were five years old? <laughs> I suppose. But it's like a cultural, it is a cultural icon. It is a very, very well-known national thing. But would you and, say like uh, the Texas State Fair is a fancy place? I've never been. I suspect it probably is sort of a glamorous affair. Like, okay, well, put it this way. I want to. I would say that the, yeah, the Calgary Stampede in Canadian terms is much bigger than the CNE in terms of notoriety. I can tell you, as someone who went this year, not a classy affair. I would love to go to some Midwest, like the Wisconsin State Fair would be incredible. And I would, and I'm saying that as I had a great time when I was there, but Tim can compare to an international movie festival is kind of outrageous. Paul. I stand by it. I think, I think, I think CNN's cool. That, that's not what you said. You said it was glamorous, just like Tiff. It is kind of glamorous. It no, is kind of glamorous. it is, is the opposite of glamorous. No, the opposite of glamorous. <laughs> Paul, yes. I one time went to the second largest gun show in southwestern Florida. I would put it on like the same bar as the CNE, basically. Hmm. It was in Fort Myers. That was probably a scene. Did what you did get- you get to eat, Jeff? Uh, no, just... A l- Nothing too fancy for me. Um, but there were fancy selections, which was my point. Yeah, they're like that crazy. There's always those crazy things if you want to get. Uh, yeah, there, there'd be like a chocolate bar deep fried with ba- with syrup and bacon attached to it. It's like just the world's worst stuff. It's all just deep fried shit. Yeah. Like I got a <laughs> Philly cheesesteak. I was happy to get that. One of the many places like that in, in the city. And then, you know, eat carnival food. With with the kids, mini donuts, slushies, all the waffle ice cream sandwich, all the goods. I'm yeah, a fair, fair fair day. So it's it's not fancy food; it's fancy gas station food. I support that. Sure, but that's not glamorous or or actually fancy. You're not going to get your favorite uh, wagyu there. No, okay, but maybe even maybe then glamorous is the the wrong word. But it's sort of like cultural. And neat and, you know, impressive. Impressive? It is a Canadian landmark. It is. It's a landmark. It's an institution in this country. But it's People not... travel to come visit the CNE. But it's the well, opposite of besides like fans you? Are... I guarantee people from all over southwestern Ontario flock to the CNE. Yeah, Ontario, key word there. Well, but buddy. there's a there's a huge population in Ontario. Well, they live an hour away. I could. I get go why someone from away. Oshawa Not... <laughs> would drive to the CNE. Yeah, or like someone who lives in, you know, Chatham, Kent, or so, so you they, know, somewhere they, in the, so, yeah. the Bible Belt. Yeah, you could drive ninety minutes to get there. You drove twenty three hours. We did. We did. <laughs> okay. I remember it distinctly. Anyway, so put we, your... went to, we went to Harvey's for breakfast every day. It was lovely. What, did you go to the Hooker Harvey's by my old place? I have no idea. I think it was on Young Street. It's a it's the longest street, street in Canada. <laughs> yeah, maybe the world. Is it the longest street in the world? It may I think be. It got surpassed recently or something. Oh, because that, that's not, that's not helping me out when you say it was on Young Street. <laughs> no, that's what I remember. Kind of, I was young at the time. Kind of goes forever. Anyway, back to the wallet thing. Here's the reason. I, I don't know if this is the reason. I mean, Tim was getting made fun of for his like phone purse that he had but we had nice we had another friend who on three separate occasions forgot his credit card in his room and it was brought up by everyone for him just to put his card on his phone which he always had on him now maybe he was doing nefarious things and he was looking for an excuse to get away from the table that's plausible but he's also an idiot so but he's not a tech He's not a technology idiot. He's just a general moron. But after being told about it a bunch of times, he still never did it. But it seems like if he was constantly forgetting your credit card, it would be a great thing to have on your person so you wouldn't have to walk around. He's not a big fan of walking, I can tell you that much. Do you suspect, Tim, Will this will be something else that Tim, in a couple weeks, months, is a huge fan of, proponent of, like loves 
lightening his card load by two or three from nine to six by putting them on his phone? Well, the biggest thing is, I mean, do you need to have your license on you at all time? I mean, according to Tim, you do. Do you need to have your social insurance number on you at all times? I don't think you do. Apparently, Tim thinks you do. Keeping your CAA card in your car makes the most logical sense to me because that's when you would probably end up using it. So most of the time, I like having all the cards on my phone, mainly because then I just have to bring my phone with me. It's great. And Timmy, yeah, I agree. I, Timmy, you can I put them all on your watch. Under, what are these other cards? Like, Tim's only mentioned a few. And I'm telling you, Tim, under 2% of people would carry their social with them. That seems high. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Paul? I don't know if I should say this publicly, but I lost my social insurance card about 20 years ago. <laughs> like, when I was in college. And I... Every single time I've had like a job interview or whatever, I've just, I know the number. So I've brought up the number. Nobody's, I've been like, oh, I forgot the card. And uh, it's, it's worked out. So no one's out there stealing your identity? <laughs> Maybe somebody did 20 years ago. I haven't had anything like catch up with me about it. But like, like, I haven't had the actual insur- physical card in 20 years. Your social insurance should be in a safe place in your house. Like you should not be walking around with that. I mean, Melvin Gordon was. Melvin Gordon was. That is true. He also got cut today by the Baltimore Ravens. Oh my God, Melvin Gordon was. Cut corner. <laughs> okay, fire away. Jeff, did you see the tweet that I put out with Tim saying that he could do 18 shots in oh. four hours on a golf course and be slightly buzzed? <laughs> well, that's not even half a 40. Tim's a dump truck. <laughs> I, I get that. Um, I don't think that's going to be possible, Tim. I think you would be like that guy on my bachelor party that we almost drove over on the cart path on the golf course that you would just be <laughs> passed out somewhere on the course. I had this idea that for the Ryder Cup tournament that we are playing, that you should be allowed to substitute a mulligan for a shot. And that there would be a maximum amount of mulligans you could take up to 18. 18 shots. No, the mulligan would need to be worth like three shots. If I was playing you in a match and you like a shot to get out of your shank. Like... Yeah, but you know, there's a there's a point of diminishing returns there, right? Every shot you every mulligan you take is one is getting closer and closer to you taking one too many. Like under Tim's rules, like I don't know. I would just every like five holes, I would take a mulligan. I wouldn't be feeling that shot anymore. Yeah, but he's like tr- one shot for a mulligan in a bet is not a fair deal. I-, I would tend to agree with you, but the way that he was passing it off is that he could just do 18 shots for his bad shot on every hole and be fine. Well, I mean, and look, and this, may, this story may be apocryphal, but I was under the understanding that the reason that Goff is 18 holes is because that's how many shots of whiskey was in the bottle of the person that helped to institute the game. And it was like a shot a hole. That was sort of the why it's 18. And that, so the idea of doing 18 shots in a round of golf, yeah, I mean, you're going to feel buzzed, no question about it. <laughs> but like, are you going to be like passed out? Yes. I mean, to 18 shots in four hours. You if you're, if you're doing absinthe, yes, sure. Which is what you seem to be recommending. What, what, what are you doing shots well, of? What if I'm doing shots of beer? What the fuck are you talking about? But I'm just doing a quick shot of beer. Oh, I re- you've really changed the narrative on this one, haven't you, pal? <laughs> I mean, I could easily do 18 to 20 shots of beer. In sure, a you're right. You can do a shot of beer, Tim. How many people are doing beer shots out there? I've not, done that before. Not what you were talking about. But I mean, if it's hard alcohol, it would depend on the stuff. Tim, let's play a round of golf. You take a shot on each tee box, I'll rip a binger. <laughs> we'll go 18. Paul had his hand up. Paul? I mean, going from beer to... Or sorry, from liquor to beers, like now you're saying that you can do 12% of like what you originally said. It's 5% versus 80%, right? Like 12 and a half. So yeah, of course, any person, a child could do, you know, 20 or 18 shots of beer. Yeah, I've done centuries before. I mean, that's the only time I've ever taken a shot of beer where you do one shot of beer per minute for 100 minutes. It's not that difficult to do. But you want to get back and you're throwing back like a shot at Jameson every single hole. You're going to be fucked. Well, I don't think that that's necessarily true. And you would be booze, but 
you know, would you be completely polluted? I don't think so. It's like a shot every 17 minutes. And yes. a, and, a, and a, yeah, no, I I'm and you can have beer as a chaser if you want. <laughs> Paul, did you have anything to add to this? Because I, I think this is outrageous, especially for Tim, who like doesn't really drink. But yeah, if you're seasoned alcoholic and you're just putting back booze every single day, all day, maybe you can ease yourself into that and you wouldn't be vomiting out the side of your golf cart and need to go to the hospital. But if you're not, if your body is not equipped for this, you're done for in the sweltering heat, moving around like you're fucked. As, as like the resident, uh, <laughs> you know, former alcoholic who used to drink tw- uh, 26 ounces pretty regularly. Like, one of the times I did it was, like, Pat's birthday. I got kicked out of his house. Uh, I was trying to wrestle him. He got, gouged my eyes a little bit. I don't remember anything. Another time, I woke up on somebody's front porch. Don't know who these people were. You they slept, called the You co- slept outside the office that time? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, well, the scary, like, the cops literally woke me up nudging me thinking I was dead on somebody's porch. And, like, I didn't have my wallet with me. Like, Tim. I think you really underestimate like drinking uh, a two six, considering you don't really drink all that often. Like I was drinking all the time, and I was absolutely annihilated. And this is over a four hour period we're talking about too. Yeah, it's not back to back to back to back to back to back. I was saying that as in that's not a very long time frame. Yeah, like I'm not doing a century of whiskey. Yeah, I, I know, but eighteen shots in four hours, man, you're done for. Absolutely done for. Like when well, I was at my... four hours. What's the most yeah. you've drank? Like say in the last five years, what is like the most you ever consumed of alcohol? Because I know you don't I drink don't, very yeah, often. It's like four shots in an hour. So are you saying, so you're on J- Tim's side here, Jeff? No, yeah, I mean, that his many. tolerance to alcohol it would be a huge factor. But I, I think you could survive the quest in better shape than you guys are leading on. It's Thank four you. shots in an hour. Thank you. Spread out in like 17-minute intervals. All right, we're going to do this. 15, no, it would be 15-minute intervals if it was four per hour. So, sure, but I mean, some holes would be 12 minutes. Other holes would be 18 minutes. Like, I don't know. The par fives would be low. Like, I'm just trying to make an, av- an average. And it'd be, yeah, four and a half hours. I think you guys are severely underrating how much of an impact that's going to have on you. Maybe you're probably right. I think you're un- overestimating how much alcohol. Well, then, really then is. we're doing it. We're I, I I will record it. We are we in the first group playing in this? No, we're not. All right. When are we? Because we're on a team at some point. You and I play on Saturday afternoon in best ball. All right. So I'll bring a thing of Jameson's and you can do 18 shots. Uh, you can do a shot on the beginning. Can it not it's be Jameson's? It's not fair Jam- to make it, it part of your, your event. I, I drink Bushmills, not Jameson's. Sure. Fine. I'll get whatever but you want. But it's not fair to make it a match in your tournament. He's on, he's, both he, he's on my team. Then the opponent's got to do it too. Your guy. No, 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 no. Not saying you can. No, no, no. Hold, hold, hold on. Tim's gonna be fine. Slightly buzzed. People play great golf. Slightly buzzed. We'll see how no. slightly buzzed he is after eighteen fucking shots of Bushnells. I'm no, 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 no. He will be he, drag. He'll, he'll we like, can't even he'll drag him out of the fucking cart to get him on the bus to go back to the place. You're just gonna be, just we're gonna leave him there till the next day. You may as well forfeit the point if he's actually doing this in a match in your in your event. And now it's a two man scramble, so I can just kind of play solo against two people if it comes down to it. But Tim has said <laughs> he he plays better buzzed. I I do play better when I've been drinking. It takes the the edge off. Tim, you better contribute in that first like four holes. Well, it's Texas scramble best ball that that force. We play a individual match play. On Friday, then we play team combined match play Saturday morning. Uh, then we play team best ball, uh, Texas scramble Saturday afternoon, and then team individual match play again on Saturday. I've long said that we should do alternate shot rather than team best ball, but I keep getting voted down every year for that. Yeah, all alternate shot. Jeff, you would know this. You, I mean, my friends, I assume, are very much like your friends. All alternate shot will do in a tournament like this. And like people aren't great. Like the, the best person there is like an eight. People are out there shooting 70s this year. Are you kidding me? People have been extremely competitive this season. How many rounds in the 70s has there been this year, Patrick, that people have talked about? 
a I've, dozen. I mean, I've had fifteen. I, I've had five. Butts has had five, and there's been like two other ones. But Ross and Shane I, have had some. I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't think that I'm going to break eighty at any of these courses that we end up going to. So they're tough tracks. They're tough tracks, and once you start adding a bit of liquor into it, and you're playing for four days straight, it's just not going to be the same. Then it ramps up the pressure a little bit. It's like one thing to shoot seventy eight at our club that I play every single week. Brand new course, tougher conditions. It's gonna be pouring rain in like thirty mile per hour winds one day. But if it's really rainy, but if it's really rainy that one day, then like the liquor will keep me warmer. Oh yeah. Wouldn't that be an advantage? I, I would think that your body type keeps you pretty warm to begin with anyway. Well, you need it to be does. overheated. That out is there? true. D- these people who complain about how an office is drafty or a room is <laughs> drafty or something. There's no such thing as too drafty. Yes, for there me. is. F- give me I am, the draft. I am. Const- I want the draft. I'm constantly cold. Well, then maybe you should see a doctor. Maybe your physical health is not good. No, it's because if you're, if you're frozen from a little tiny draft, I'm a fan of drafts. I am pro draft. Draft D R A U G H T and draft D R A F T. Well, it seems like you want to be doing shots of draft, which is uh, beside the point that we were doing. I there... could do a century. Of dra- I could do a century from a keg. Why would you have to do it from a keg? You can do it from draft well, beer. You can be do it from yeah. bottles of beer. Like, you can do it from someone like beer. Cam Stewart could do a shot. Yeah, on each. I hole. would agree. There's like two or three guys on this trip that could probably do it. I wouldn't say no problem. They'd be lit up, but they wouldn't be like. Well, didn't they say one of them drank a sixty sixer last year on our trip? Yeah, the the dude from the middle of Newfoundland and the fucking Navy can put it back, man. I'm, that's not you. <laughs> I played in a buddy's member guest a couple weeks ago, and one of my buddies, he drank like a Gatorade bottle full of booze by the seventh hole. He was literally on the ground. <laughs> like, he couldn't even like it. It was such... Honestly, like, this was a nice place. It was kind of like an embarrassment. <laughs> like, get your I shit played together. golf last two years ago. I played golf with a fellow at a club. Uh, and, uh, he... I didn't know him. He was the friend of one of the fellows we were playing with. He shows up in jeans and he doesn't use a T. <laughs> and he brought with him two cases of beer. This is the same guy. And he shot, no, he shot 77 <laughs> for that round of golf. And he drank 18 beer, 19 beer, 20 beer in jeans. It was like watching Mozart play the oh. piano when you're Salieri. You still you can't even believe it's happening. <laughs> That's the best. I love stories like that. And it's Didn't so use humbling. A tea on the tee box and was just striping it down There's the middle. No- oh. Like on like top of are- that, there is nothing worse than your buddy who like never golfs and comes out and like beats you by four, five strokes, like never plays ever. Oh, it's the worst. It happens. But oh, so- yes, I-, I just don't think that you're going to survive this one. 18 shots of beer. No, that would do me. You're not doing 18 shots of beer. Or white cloth. You're not doing what are you 18 talking shots. Talking about now, you're changing it. Absolutely. Y- you know what? Now he's terrified to do this. By the way, I'm not terrified. Then do it. I'm not intimidated. I'm not intimidated. We're, we're, we're playing. Like... We're, we're playing the practice round on Thursday. We'll do it then. Well, we could, but like my whole point was that it should be set up so that you could have a mulligan and a hole if you wanted, based on the shot. Yeah, but if you only end up taking like three mulligans, then it's like going to be nothing. Do you? Then I we, suppose we, if you we, take one, you must have to take, you have to probably take nine if you're going to take one. Well, I was going to say like that. You're bought I, I mean, in for what, that. What one shot, uh, to Jeff's original point, because no one's going to take 18 mulligans throughout the course of the round, but you want it to be penal if you're taking a mulligan, that it should be like three shots per mulligan. If you really want to yeah. take one, now you're going to like, you take three shots in a row. I mean, at the height of my drinking, my move was just show up to the bar and just pound three shots of tequila. Then I was feeling pretty, then I was feeling warm for a while and I didn't need to go back to the well, but that was like a nice base to set myself at kind of buzz after like three minutes of being there. If I pounded back three shots of tequila on like the second hole, I'd, I'd have a good buzz on for like eight or nine holes. I think. Well, that would be fun. We could do that in the practice round. Yeah, but that, Three I want... shots of tequila, then having to like redrop and hit the shot that you just took a mulligan for, <laughs> probably might just go find that first one and play it as it lies. But what if it's lying in the trees? Knock it out. I'll stand where, oh, there's a split. I'll be, it'll be like Mexico City with Phil. I was going to hit my driver out of this bush, <laughs> you see, uh, but there's a water uh, main here. 
Well, I would equate it to this, Jeff. I played Cabot earlier this year with Tim, and I think we had four tall boys on the course, and Tim had the yeah. spins at the restaurant. <laughs> that did happen. <laughs> so. That's Probably around the sun all day, too. You, you don't think that we're going to be in the sun playing golf? Well, we walked uh, the, the links, whereas we're, you know, we're driving around in carts. Yeah, but you take a lot of shots. That's a lot of energy you're expending. As Paul pointed out, the more shots that you take, the more movement you have, the more dehydrated that you end up getting. Paul. That's true. That is true. Tim also said he could do the Century Club, which I think he could maybe. That's not very hard. 100? 100? The power hour is hard. Uh, the Century Club is very difficult. I would like to see that as well. We got a lot of things. We need to start for... getting Tim to back up. You know, a lot of these things that he says he can do. We need to start getting One on shot tape. Of beer, what? Every, Why are what? we sending Tim? It's like Rush at university, right? Now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're well, I did fr- recommend that we should have brought a keg with us. You, when you said we could have done keg stands, you wanted to do a keg stand on a Heineken mini keg. I think, I can be done. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe I'm light enough to do that. You might crush that fucking thing. And there's Just no saying. way you can do a handstand. I used to be able to. When? When I was like six or seven. <laughs> oh, I never really practiced. Do you think you could? I don't have any crash mats. Do you hey. think? You, why would you need a crash mat? You can do it. Well, just in case I crashed. Tim, and like these Tim, mini kegs have like 12 beers, right? Yeah. And he's, yeah. They're like this big. <laughs> like they're, 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 I don't even know if he'd get two of his giant fucking mitts on those things to get around. Like, I mean, to be able to hoist yourself up, Tim, that's, that's going to be tough. Even on like a real keg. We should have brought a keg. Then go get one. You have the ability well, to do these things. At first, I have no idea how you get a keg. I don't know how you do a tap. I don't know how you do any of that stuff. I don't know how you put it together. I, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, if a bunch of drunk 18-year-olds can figure out how to do it every university across any country, I think you can probably figure it out. Plus, you can't bring the cu- the keg out on the golf course, so like, I wouldn't be able to drink it all the time. So now you're talking yourself out of it because you don't want to have to go get it now that I've mentioned it. Well, I also just don't quite understand how to do it still. They can tell you. Be like, hey, how do I tap this? They'll tell you. That's what we did when we bought it underage. Yeah, the, the the staff at the beer store would literally be able to tell you the two things you need to do. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. You no, not maybe. Like putting a deposit down on a keg? No, I just, I don't want to drink a keg by myself. That would be a lot of drinking for a weekend, drink a whole keg by yourself. But you said you could also drink a Texas Mickey by yourself. I thought I could. Y- you can't. <laughs> What are you talking about? I thought I could, but apparently the Texas Mickey is not what I thought it was. What did you what? think that it was? What what you guys call a 66er. You thought that was a Texas Mickey? Yes, I realized by the error of my ways. So you can't drink a Texas Mickey in a day now? No. No, no, I can't. You die. I don't think you can drink a 60. I don't think you can drink a 40 in a day of liquor. You'd have to start first thing. I don't think you would make it. I think you'd fall asleep. Like, like I said, if I had a sixty or sort of forty of gin in DC and started it first thing in the morning and went all day with it, I think I could could do it. But I think I'd be wrecked. I just don't think you'd make it throughout the day. I think you you would fall asleep at some point. I think we should you should try that for the week one Jets Bills Monday Nighter. <laughs> like that should be your lead into the game. Yeah, just take all day <laughs> off DCs and gin from yeah. six a.m. <laughs> I need a mental health day. And that mental health day consists of me drinking gin all day. Cuss corner. <laughs> this show is the mozzarella sticks of preview <laughs> shows. It is going to be the best possible appetizer you can have to whet that, that appetite before we dive into the American Football Conference. I, I think people are not going to be shortchanged here today. I think we have a lot of interesting things to say. At least I do about some of these teams in the, in the second tier conference, but there's still good teams there and there's still lots of intrigue and a bet on this conference counts as much as a bet on the other. The NFC win total show on the Pat Mayo experience, just like mozzarella sticks destined to give you heartburn. Yeah. And not of an air fryer. Stop it with your air fryer nonsense. I don't want any air fryers. Okay. Out of the oven or out of a deep fryer. That's the way to have them. 
I you're mean, like four months from being an air fryer guy. Like, yeah, it's true. Your trajectory on everything. <laughs> no. I started yeah, using. You, you I, I started using. September, I started using. Love it by Christmas. Yeah, I no, started. No, I don't want an air fryer. Everyone loves their air fryers. Well, you know, you enjoy them. They're good for you. But me, I want. Deep fryer, I want an oven. That's what I know. Wait, wait, hold I on, hold with. That's what I'm comfortable with. Hold on. When was the last time you used a fucking deep fryer, pal? Well, I use oil to fry. So you shallow fry things. Shallow fry or even somewhat deep fry in a wok. But you don't have a deep fryer, like a device, a deep fryer. No, I don't. I do not have one of those. But I mean, I deep fry it without you a deep fryer. just call use it a wok your deep fryer? Yeah, of course. How high do you like? Do you put it like put in the put in the oil and just crank it up to max and throw shit in? Well, it depends on the oil, but yeah, I'm careful. Are you? Yeah, I am, and I don't need an air fryer. I, I'm, people love them; good for them. God bless them. Let them enjoy their air fryers. I'm sure they're great, but not for me. They're just not for me. Jeff, I was very they're much. On, I, I was very much on the same page with Tim. Like everyone was getting air fryers. I was like, yeah, whatever. I don't need an air fryer. Then my wife came home with one one day, and I started using. It. I was like. Well, this is just faster than using the oven. This is great. This is like an Apple Watch. Like <laughs> Tim will, the air fryer will have a prominent place on his kitchen counter. Something's getting the bump. It's just a couple months down the road. Oh, Paul has his I'm hand. I'm allowed Paul. to be wrong. I, I have growth and show that I change <laughs> opinions. <laughs> Paul wants to weigh in on air fryer. I know Paul's a big air fryer guy. I was anti-air fryer like you guys at first, and then I got one, and it's just like there's no cleanup. They have like – it's so much better. You get like crispy fries. It's a lot easier to control as long as you're not cooking for like a large group of people. Like Top Cat, I'm telling you, air frying is for you. You would love it. Oh, great. Another person who's telling me I've got to get an air fryer. Like God forbid I use a <laughs> stove like the average person. I, I used to no, be I'm you. I used to be you, and I've I've changed when the facts changed. I was wrong. <laughs> air fryers are the future. I, I just Minus can't see me. I can't see me having one of those big old air fryers on my counter. Well, that's crazy because it's minus one seventy five. You get an air fryer this football season. <laughs> Top Cat Dinner One needs uh, an air fryer. Maybe even a dual. Do you have the dual one, Paul, or just the one? I just have the one, but I could probably use two slots. Like, you know, when you, if you're making wings and fries, like it gets dicey. You kind of have to like turn the oven on to keep your food warm in between. Um, having two port, like that would be the next level. Um, I didn't think I was going to love it as much as I do. I cook everything in there now. I barely ever use my oven. My and like, I used to like make fries in like just a pot of oil and one it's dangerous two it's unhealthy you get crispy fries in your in your air fryer and like there's no cleanup you just throw it in the dishwasher like tim get with the times buddy you'll love it i guarantee it would become like you would cook 90 percent of your meals in there oh m more yeah, yeah, unless he's you, making it in the microwave, it'll be made in the air. You'll fryer. throw unless your microwave out. Yeah, unless you're cooking it in like a full pizza, which wouldn't fit in. I, I don't see what else you would cook that you wouldn't use. Like I even cooked like chicken thighs in it instead of putting it in the oven. They take like half as long to cook. Well, I could grill those. Sure, but you're not going to be grilling in the middle of the winter. Sure. Okay, then yeah, then then use your grill. That's fine. Do do you not? Do you, so for every piece of meat that you use, you grill. No, I, I, I usually bake. It's See, healthier. The, so this would save you a ton of time. Oh, great. So another person, another person to add to the pile of people telling me <laughs> I've got to have an air fryer, that is oven that was good enough for my grandmother and for my family and for me isn't good enough anymore. Might as well throw up my stove and take the element out. This is what Your I'm being told logic is so funny. Like... I've said this before, but if you were in a dentist chair before they, you know, could freeze your mouth, you'd just been like, no, nope, my grandparents did it without. There like are it. a lot of people who still don't get that Novocaine in the dentist chair. The dentist will ask you before they do dental surgery, Jeez, would you like it? Who, yeah, would who, you like it? Because there's apparently, I've, I've got asked this question the last time I was at the dentist's office. It was like, do you want the Novocaine? And I was like, why, why would I not want it? And the dentist said, there are quite a few people who refuse it, who do not want it, who grew up in a time where it either didn't exist or it was super expensive and are just used to not having it during dental 
Okay, so you're done. like the guy who is around when they finally invent the electrical fan, and you're like, no, I, I don't need it. I don't need it. Well, Tim I, is my, Tim, my, my in, elders did this summer their whole lives. In fairness to Tim, he is terrified of fan death, so that's why he doesn't use fans. <laughs> So in the comment section, please, if you are an air fryer enthusiast, please leave some sort of inspiring message to Tim. Because Jeff's right. I think minus 175 is like on the low end. Like if you can get 175 as your price right now on Tim becoming a convert to an air fryer, it's going to be like minus 900 in like two months. Paul. It's not going to happen. I recommended to Pat for like your birthday and for like Christmas to buy you an air fryer. That's how much has changed my cooking game at home. Like long before we had this conversation, you'll you'll have an air fryer, buddy, <laughs> and you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. You have the intimidation factor of someone who plays Dungeons and Dragons. True. <laughs> that will do it <laughs> on the show. Smash the like, and in the comment section, you can either give me your favorite bet for the NFC or sell Tim on why he should have an air fryer like we all I, tried I don't to need do an air fryer. earlier on in the course of this show. Smash the like and you sub guys the enjoy your air fryer. Well, you are here. I want to thank everyone for watching. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. I mean, you go ahead. You enjoy your air fryers. You have fun with them. You uh, tell everybody, how, you know, how could I live my, um, I've had two f forms of my life, pre-air fryer and post-air fryer. Like, you go ahead and make it sound like it's this like life-changing thing. I have an oven. I have a microwave. I have a wok to fry things in. Somehow, I guess I'll manage to get by like the homesteaders of years past and my grandmother and mother and everyone, like 99% of people have never had an air fryer. But of course, I've got to have an air fryer to change my whole life. When you get an air fryer, you're going to talk about how great it is. No, I don't think I will. I can't see the circumstance where I would have an air fryer. I just want to go home and see my kids. All right, fine. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> just now. Grinds my gears. Cuz corner. <laughs> it's been bothering me, and it's another millennial trend, or maybe it's more of a Gen Z trend. You should really change this, that because you are a millennial. Well, see, I don't know. I don't know which trend it is. <laughs> but what I know is it's these young people who are obsessed with this concept called bed rotting. I don't know if you've heard of it. Obs there's been articles on it. Obs with the obsessed with it. It was like a, it's the, I'm pretty sure it no, was like there's a multiple parody. articles about it. There's mul it's a real thing. You look it up. There are multiple articles about it. It's this idea that you should call in sick from work because for a mental health day and lay in bed all day long and just scroll through your TikToks and through your social medias and binge watch a show and don't move. This is their, their, their idea of self-care, not get outside and go for a hike or anything. No, no, let's just sit inside and scroll through TikToks and that will somehow be just, to me, it seems that just compounds a problem. That's not the right way. I don't think to do your self-care. To just sit at home and lay in, literally rot in bed. It's sort of like, sort of a, 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 it's a joking term, but that's what the concept is. And I just, it annoys me that you would just take a day off work to do that, to get yourself right. I don't, I don't understand it. That's not what I would ever do. When was the last time you went I on probably, a hike, as you're suggesting? I went on a hike earlier in August. I didn't enjoy a moment of it, I should add. Uh, but I went on a hike in August on a particular trail. Uh, I didn't, didn't know it was coming. You got yeah. taken on a mystery hike? I didn't realize that the plan for the day was a hike. Uh, and that's what it became. See, I feel uh, like... I feel, is, get I feel like... Get active and do something. Go I promise you, when I had nothing to do or no children to tend to, uh, when I... Like, when I... After one or two of those Jets playoff wins versus the Chargers, I probably did what you're saying you hate the next day, minus the TikTok. Just like, why lie in bed and watch a show? I, I could have done it after the Jags game this year. Sure, probably would have done it too. But I don't so don't wouldn't celebrate that way of life. I would say that that is profoundly problematic, and we shouldn't be encouraging people to act that way. We should encourage people if they need to take time for their mental health. There's a hundred and ten practical, productive ways to do that. Let's that don't constitute dropping out of. It's a very antisocial approach of just scrolling through TikToks and watching the Netflix all day. 
Okay. Again, it was glamorized. You, you said, I mean, is it glamorized or is it just on TikTok? No, I believe it's being glamorized. I see the articles. You, for years on this show, have basically preached this, except you weren't in your bed, you were on your couch. I don't like going no. outdoors. I'm an indoorsman. I don't want to go do anything. You can do these things. In, you can do all kinds of stuff indoors. Go to the gym. That's a great way. Go on a car ride. That's a great thing to do. Go to the movies. That's fine. Then you're out and you're in society and you're doing stuff. You can be an indoorsman and still not bed rot with your, your day. Take a day off work to go lay in bed and watch the TikToks all Wednesday. I'm sorry. I just don't think that is in any way, shape, or form a healthy expression of uh, for, for oneself. D is anyone saying that it's a good thing? Anyone? It like seems like it's kind of glamorized. When you're, when you're saying it seems like that, have you seen anyone say, this is this is really cool, this is what people should be doing? Or is everything that you've seen been it's like, trend. this is outrageous? It's considered like, a, a, I'm looking at the very first thing on health.com. It's a new self-care trend. What is that but glamorization? I mean, this was the same thing when people were eating Tide Pods. They were glamorizing I, that because they were talking about it? It was stupid? An another article, actually, it can be a very legit form of self-care. I mean, it probably can be, right? I mean, Jeff, I'm not going to lie to you. This was a lot of my college experience was doing this. Just deciding, hey, I'm not going to go to class. I'm going to lay on my couch, smoke weed, and watch Family Guy for like eight straight hours. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. Even days I thought I was going to class, you realize, oh, shit, I'm not going to class. Like, we all lived through the pandemic. It was miserable to have to be indoors by yourself all day doing nothing. Sounds awesome. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't no, I don't sound mean awesome. That... He's just it talking about antisocial. The... He's talking about the pandemic in general. Jeff just wishes that would come back. Good Jeff. time for Jeff. Bro, no, people wait, having heart attacks. Have... Pro pandemic. Uh, you know, pro Again, this is... not giving awards to people who die on the field, pro stealing. Yeah, Jeff's pro and against many things. I'll tell you what, Tim. Like, do you know what sounds freaking amazing? And not to harp on this, but like to get a day to lie in bed and do nothing? Like, what I would do for that. I would rather go to the spa. At least you're getting out of the house. Well, you I would rather well, go to what, the movies. That's go to dinner. You want to tug. No. That's why you want to go to the spa. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. This go to know. the movies. Go to the mall and go for a walk. Do something productive that isn't completely anti. So I'm sorry. I don't think that this whole bed rotting tr thing is something that we should valorize. I think it's, a, I don't think it's, I think it's a, it's the wrong solution to what is a real problem. So the real problem is that people feel burned out or stressed. I completely appreciate that. And people should be looking after their mental health and taking mental health days where required. I support that completely, but this is the wrong solution to that problem. I see. I don't know. Paul, you have something to say? This is the same guy that didn't break triple digits on his step counter a few times <laughs> last year on this program, correct? And was I glamorizing? <laughs> well, I was working from home that day and not doing anything. I'm not here to glamorize that. I'm not here to saying that like you should be like me. And like everyone should live that trend, uh, you know that I, I so that that's sort of t you know off the the point I'm trying to make here, which is that this hipster millennial Gen Z trend can't possibly bear fruit. So let's see. According to many social media, such a dud. <laughs> such a dud. This trend has always existed. Yeah. No, it hasn't Wait, always this, existed. This was most of my college life. Was this? No, it wasn't. It was. I. You knew me from Netflix one year didn't of exist. TikToks didn't exist. Yeah, we had DVDs, Tim. We had DVDs, we had weed, and we had takeout. This is what we did. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I don't agree. I think this is you a You don't very agree. Fringe. Here's, here's what I'm sure I, there was a here, few people here, who lived Here's what I did. No, you didn't. I didn't know you, but I know you didn't. No do one that. was glamour. Nobody was doing this on the regular. I mean, I was doing I was doing it too much, but no one is saying to do... I'm reading the article right now. It's not saying to do it on the regular. It's saying that if you are stressed out and burnt out from things like working too much, social engagements, family demands, schools, that having a day to do this... Now, Jeff, it's funny. I didn't realize this would be coming up, but as a gift to me, my wife's the best. My wife, very nice lady. She took the kids on Sunday morning during Labor Day weekend to a different province to go visit her friends and her kids to give me 
all of Sunday and most of Monday to, to like hang out, do whatever I want, knowing that I'm going to be working like seven days a week for 20 straight weeks. So it was a very nice thing to do. So I did play golf that morning with Tim. Um, and then afterwards, I went home, I got into bed, put on Netflix, watched all of season two of Arrested Development, had takeout, woke up the next morning, ordered breakfast for myself in bed and continued to watch TV in bed. That's what I did. It was amazing. Yeah, it sounds amazing. It was amazing. I feel like I did something similar when my wife took, yeah, our kids to her friend's cottage and their kids play and everything's great. No one. But I don't like there. this. Uh, I don't like although this. I was, I like, you know, obviously don't have your like work, 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 <laughs> life balance, Pat, but I was proactive on Sunday. Like I am the captain of this ship. Uh, family activities because I know like I'm you know just an okay dad and truthfully I'm going to be abandoning my family for many Sundays to come see Tim you're right when I was doing this five days a week for three years it wasn't super healthy and a bad idea but there was a reason that myself and so many people even that I know used to do stuff like this all the time because I mean it's just being super lazy and not doing anything to do it now is fucking awesome it's great but I don't think we glamorized it either. It wasn't like, give me props, guys. I missed all my classes today and smoked like this. You this, just uh, finished th glamorizing the both of you doing this exact thing. No. Oh, now I'm glamorizing it as a father with multiple kids. And like the concept of it is more amazing now than it was then in get, college. Get out of the house and do something that day. I'm out, I'm out of the house I, all the time. <laughs> Go to the movies. Go play. You played golf, though. At least that you did something. Yeah, but I didn't you do know, anything. But I movies, didn't do go anything to the on mall, the Monday. Go to I... the spa. Go to the gym. Go on a hike. Do you something. Act, you act like I don't do these things. I'm not talking to I'll, you. you. I'm talking. Who are you in talking general. to? What do you mean? You're so talking, talking, talking to, to me, McDonald's Andrew. McDonald's the alone. audience. I'm talking to the audience. Does I don't know if you're someone McDonald's who's active. Alone count as something. What? If I say go do something, what if the thing I choose to do is go to McDonald's alone? Yeah, to get, a, to get a diet, to, to you, get you a better, dollar you, drink. You better eat in. You better eat in. When was the last time you ate in a McDonald's without kids, Jeff? Oh, I couldn't even remember. I, why? Yeah, I, I, I agree. Well, I actually don't. Have, I actually do it on occasion because that you get it the freshest and hottest. I don't like to eat while I drive, so. You live legitimately I mean, I, like, three was, minutes like, from 20 McDonald's. Twenty minutes early for an errand or something. I yeah, but I don't go like... to that McDonald's too often. They get my orders wrong too often. I just can't be bothered. So I'll go to a do, different one. So where do you go to get McDonald's? How far do you drive to go to the McDonald's? There's one on the. There's one on the Bedford Highway. How are you highway? complicating McDonald's? You're Hold ordering on, the, for four. The one on the right? Bedford Highway, the one that's in Bedford. Yes. That must take you twenty-five that's... minutes to get to. No, it takes like twelve. Oh, I, I want this to be timed. It doesn't take that long. Paul is saying a liar from behind the camera. I don't know. No, I, think... I, said, I said, why? Oh, why? Because apparently the one nearer wrong. to me keeps making, keeps, and I'm not the only person. I know other people who live in this general vicinity who will Where tell you. What do they get wrong? I'm curious what your change up is. Because if, for example, I can't stand ketchup on my burgers, like it's disgusting. Oh, uh, I nice. have ordered. Yeah, well, fair enough. I know. You, you, you like it so much, you'll scream at people not have to put a mask on to get your burger with ketchup. But, like, if I want, <laughs> I'll order a hamburger and get a McChicken. Or I'll, yeah, anyway, any number of things, things have gotten wrong. I order the breakfast burritos and they don't come. Anyway, I've had enough me mess ups and, and mix ups with this place that unless I am in person in that spot and can look it over, and, anyway. It's just easier for me to go down the road five extra, seven extra minutes and go to one that's more consistent. So, Jeff, to your point, when I was doing the bed rotting during college and even a little bit after college as well, um, people would look at me and say, hey, that Pat, he's probably pretty depressed because he doesn't do anything. And they were probably right about that because most of my week was doing that. But to get to do this like once every eight months or something, I, I get it. I absolutely get it. Old. Well, I'm against it. Yeah, it's because you don't do anything. I do things. You're not you're not as out in it for all like you said there's 110 things that you could do instead of doing this. Can you list the 110 things, please? 
I don't have them off the top. I gave you five or six or seven. You, you had go to the movies, go to McDonald's, and go for a hike and go to the gym. There's four. Go to the mall. Go on a drive. Go visit some relatives. Uh, that's a good start. I mean, Just going on a walk in your neighborhood. Or if you have a dog, go walk your dog. You realize the point uh, of this is because people are being too active. They need to do something else. They want to calm down and take a break from all this. This is a different stuff. type of activity. This is a self-recharging type of activity. This is one that should charge your... All these things I'm recommending should charge your batteries, not deplete them. But most people would think that this is. This is what I'm constantly doing. Tim acts doing. like he's above like sitting on his goddamn couch watching six episodes of something. It's bullshit. Which, which is actually what he does. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I can understand it if you're hungover. I've been there. I can appreciate that. But beyond that type of situation, or if you're sick, I can understand that. But beyond that, if you're... I'm sorry. I just think this is a trend that 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 does not have a good ending to it. I don't... I don't I, like you said, like it, it, it's easy to slip into these habits, and these habits do not yield good fruit. So yeah, but best the, to avoid. It. But no one is saying to do this every day of the week. Very it, difficult, though. You start with one, and then one becomes two, and it's just perfect no, abstinence. No, is it, always it, no, better it, than it, perfect it, moderation. It, it doesn't. That, that nothing would suggest that this is happening. The reason that I was able to do it because I literally wasn't taking a break for anything. This was just my life. If people actually yeah, are well, doing this, people... to no, are they? Because it says to get away from work, school, family demands, or social engagement. That sounds like you're doing things. No. No, no I, it doesn't. I, That's I, not what doing things are. What would you say doing is, things are? I, I think this leans more towards people who are in their oh, 20s. I, 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 see, I, I see how it is. Well, the lot in, you, in your world, you, know, you, you told me the article to look at, and I'm looking at it. And you're saying not what it says. You're just... It, you want to put on whatever you think. It no, should you're be. just imagining them having as busy of lives as you have. This this trend don't. is popular amongst Gen Z who may feel burnt out from work, school, family demands, or social engagements. Well, so better, these are people who are like 23 years old, who are the same age essentially you were when you were doing this stuff. Yeah. And, and I was doing this. And, and, and I was a and very I was, bad way to live, and it was easy to slip into these habits. I didn't have to do these things. I wasn't working. I wasn't going to school because I was skipping school to do this. Never saw my family, and maybe some people would come over at night and continue to smoke weed with me. That was it. But if these people are actually doing these things, I could see wanting to get away. I get it. How many of difference. our listeners and viewers do you think are doing this right now? Because I'd say a lot. Very few. Very oh, few. Come Most, on. I bet you. Who do you think is watching the show? People commuting to work. Tim. I bet you 60 plus percent of your audience listens to your shows going to or coming home from work. Maybe coming home from work. There's a lot of people. Jeff, you would know this. Light up a joint, turn the show on on Tuesday or Wednesday evenings, and just sit there and let it play. Yeah, let it play. Walk the dog. Go walk. Except the for dog. our one friend who watches it at three a.m. in Munich. Walk the dog with a joint, and I, uh, you know, keep those cold mountains blue. Let's go. I, I mean, I don't know what other people's listening habits are, but I, I'm kind of just listening on the go most of the time entertains me sitting somewhere waiting for kids or something well paul let's throw it to you because tim is very anti this i see the benefits of this and i think jeff does too and i would enjoy doing it what do you think i think that guys like me and tim who don't have kids probably can't relate because we do have a lot more free time i have a dog but like god my god it's nothing like what you guys have to deal with with two young kids who constantly need stuff from you so, yeah, having a day or a day and a half off where you're able to just, like, watch TV and do nothing seems like it would be pretty soul-healing. I could, I could relate, and I can see how it would be really a big deal for you guys. I have quite a bit of free time. Yeah, but so I get to do this stuff quite a bit. Like, I get to watch, like, Netflix and stuff like that. But uh, you guys don't have time for that. You have kids waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning. You have to tend to that. Oh, 6 would be so nice. Yeah. Be the best. Maybe that's the difference, Tim. Maybe. Well, Tim, Maybe Tim does have main character. But the vast here, preponderance so he, of the people he who are in this article. This. No, but the vast majority of the people who are in the age demo this is talking about probably do not have children. Probably do not have a young family. 
Well, Desmond Ritter does. We just covered that. He's I good. said the preponderance of. Not everybody. But there's also a new psychology. Um, I don't even know if I'm saying this right. Among like work at uh, people. People at jobs like seem to care less than ever, like working you, hard for someone else, unless you actually own something. Did you, did you see the new season of South Park? The like it's called where like Cartman took like, the job like, on. That's what know, I'm but, thinking of. Like some of your friends will consider you like an idiot for working hard for someone else to make more money. Like, kids okay, but that, kids, I guess. that's true. And I think there's some, there's some validity to what you're saying, but that's not quite the same point that I was making here. Yeah, but it's the generation, their outlook. Like, who cares? I'm just going to lie around for a day. Like, I would say that that is probably not conducive to a society that is dynamic. So what are you doing and about it? We, we'll, be, we'll be worse off as a society if people tend to use their free time to do nothing rather than be productive or creative in some way. We'll all pay for it in the end. Well, it sounds like these poor people are burnt out. I know what it's I, like. They, to, I, I don't. I, I don't doubt I, that they I, are. I but know I'm what it's like to be burnt out. Even before I had so do kids, I. I, so do, do I. Do you? Oh yeah, I know what it's like to be burned out. Absolutely, oh, sure. Everyone burns out in different ways from different things. But like, I don't think laying in bed all day and scrolling through TikTok is the answer. I A really twelve don't. minute shoveling shift is not what Pat is talking about. For you Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, him. thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. But just think about when we worked at Fantasy, Jeff. I mean, I would like to put it on record that I worked harder than you did there because I was working yeah. 80 hours a week. There would be a point during every football season where I just kind of, I, I needed a day just to do nothing and like basically like lay in my room in the dark before I could like recharge and keep going again. I didn't have kids at that time. I was just working really hard. So maybe that's what these Gen Z people are like. Just working Go too hard. Go for a hike. Telling you people. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I should have done. I should have went for a fucking hike. Or That would have made me feel something. great. Paul? I think so. Tim keeps saying go for a hike, and he went for a hike at the beginning of August. So what have you been doing for the last month? And he hated it. I go for hikes like every, pretty much every single day. To an and extent. it seems like he got tricked into his hike <laughs> by how he described it. They yeah. didn't see it coming. <laughs> go for a hike. My last one was five weeks ago. Also, practice what you preach. I unless you're someone who enjoys hiking. Hiking fucking sucks. Sure, then if that's not your cup of tea, do something else. Go to a beach, go to a mall, go to a spa, go for a nice car drive, do, do something outside of the house. Go to the VLTs if that's what makes you happy. That's your suggestion? Go play. Go, no. Go, no, that, go, no, go, no. go gamble in the bottom no. of a bar on <laughs> slot machines. Is your advice no. to people, Tim? No, I'd like to recant that last sentence. I do not agree with it. I wish I had not said it. Don't do that. But do something out of the house that's productive, that recharges you, that isn't just laying down in bed, rotting away and, and whittling away your day. I want, I, want to, I want to hear from the I want to hear from the people on this. The people who are watching this show. I mean, if you're listening to the audio podcast, you can come to YouTube to comment or tweet at me, Jeff and Tim. Doesn't bed rotting sound nice? Yes or no? Are you for it or are you a gimmick? If it was you who got to have 24 hours in bed. Just laying around, no obligations. You can order some takeout. You have to walk down to the door, get it, bring it back up to bed. Maybe throw it on a plate, but fuck it. Maybe just eat it right out of the bag. I don't know. I think it sounds pretty good to me. I want to hear from you guys. Cause corner. <laughs> I know that a lot of us are going through, well, not a lot of us. Those of us who are network TV watchers <laughs> know that there is a strike underway with the Hollywood writers. And so we're not going to get as much new content on our TV as we're used to having in the fall. So I have a tip and a trick for the people to entertain yourself uh, during this downtime. It's something I learned very recently. Somebody showed me. Now, I have the newest iPhone, so I know I have this capability. I don't know about others. It's called screen mirroring. And so let me explain how it works. What you do, right, is this little icon on your phone. As long as your television is the smart TV, like mine is, the Roku, you click this button. And if your Wi-Fi data and its Wi-Fi data are the same, whatever is on your phone shows up on your television and the sound from your TV works. So the, I was able the other day to flick through like the TikToks, not on my phone, having to hold my phone and like lay on your side where it's cramped. 
but like comfortably on your couch, watch like TikToks or videos or scroll Twitter on a bigger screen or whatever. It is, you know, your evenings are going to be quieter without network TV on. You're going to be looking for something to do. Now, if you're like me and you're active through the day and you're exhausted when work is done and you just want to relax, this thing called screen mirroring. So what you do is when you open up your iPhone, you scroll down with your finger at the top the same way you would to get a flashlight. And what you'll see is there's this picture and picture sort of thing where it's like one square over another square, sort of like the first start of like, if you're going to draw one of those 3d cubes, you click on that. And then your television magically knows to pair your phone screen with your TV screen. It is the coolest thing. I don't doubt some people do know about it, but I bet you most people don't. It's really awesome. That's my tip to you. Screen mirroring. Uh, it, It has been a game changer. Can you, Tell me about this again. How do you do it on your phone? So you scroll, you know, once the, the you're off your lock screen, uh, then you, you know, you, you, you scroll down with your finger the same way you would if you wanted to, like, see the tele, the airplane and the flashlight and the calculator or whatever. But okay. I never noticed it. Until someone showed it to me. There's a little button there, which is like a square on top of a square. And that's called screen mirroring. Okay. You click the screen mirroring button, and then if your television is smart like mine is, if your Wi-Fi data and its Wi-Fi data are on the same networks, you can click a button, and boom, you can have on your television what you have on your phone. Now, I don't know, I haven't tried this yet, if what you see on your television you can see on your phone. Like, if I'm watching cable TV on my television... <laughs> I don't know if it works in reverse. I've never tried that, but I have done the phone to TV. I'm telling you, it is awesome. Okay. I, like I, now I understand why people have screen a Netflix mirroring. app. Screen yeah, mirroring. Yeah, screen mirroring. Now I can understand why someone would have the Netflix app on their phone. It never made any sense to me before, but now I get it because you can just click a button and then mirror your phone and watch it on the television. It's, and if it's I'm really like bootlegging... Genius. If I'm bootlegging a stream on my phone, I can put that on my TV? As I understand it, everything that is on the screen of your telephone goes from like, you know, like the when Willy Wonka, how they were able to turn the to the TV machine. They could turn big things into little things, you know, by transporting it. Like the big chocolate bar turns into a little one. So it's like the reverse here where you turn the little things into the big things. Through the, it's, it, I'm telling you, folks. For those of you who don't know about it, I didn't know about it till recently. Someone showed it to me the other night. It has been rev- revelatory because we're not going to have the TV shows that we want to watch through the week on on network cable. This is a way for you to get through this strike. Okay, so, so I thoroughly encourage you to do this. I, is this new? Because I've never heard of this. I didn't know of it either. Who a friend this of ours, team? a friend of ours, on Friday evening when we were chatting. And I was talking about how, you know, I have tech problems, as everybody knows. And he's like, well, do you know about screen mirroring? And I you know, was like, no, what in the name of God is that? And uh, took me through it step by step. I was able to figure it was. And then I had to go home when I went home and tried it. it sure enough, it worked. Like, it's really tech usually never works easily for me. There's always hoops to jump through and problems and anxieties. This is so easy. So I. I encourage you, the people, this is, you know, as a man of the people, for the people, I'm giving you a tip to make your lives easier. When you want to relax after a hard day at work or whatever, mirror your phone to your television and you have better sound, picture, everything. Uh, I think it's a really cool idea. You know, when we've gotten together for those drafts that we do for the fantasy footballs every year and we project the Excel sheet onto the screen, Tim? What do you think we use? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I have no idea. You just thought that was magic. I don't know. I don't know if you're using the fire stick or what you're using. I have no idea. I don't so, know how that works. So two things here. What year, Jeff, would you say that screen mirroring from your iPhone or whatever mobile device has been available since? I don't know, but it was available like when I was working. When I met you, like in, yes, I was using right. that technology back. There's in no the, way it was that old. 2012. Because we used to use it at the office all the time from our phones. Yeah. 
you're, see, you're over I, a decade. I feel like I would have not, 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 not only this. are you a decade late on screen mirroring with your fucking hot tips. Additionally, everything that you're talking about, I guess outside of TikTok, like if you want to watch TV, whether it be on, I mean, you can watch it on whatever your cable system is. They have an app. You can watch it on Max. They have an app. Paramount Plus, they have an app. Netflix, they have an app. Why wouldn't you just use the app instead of streaming it from your phone? Well, you can just use your phone though this way. But you don't have but to why? use your phone this way. It's you can just easier use... for me to navigate the phone. You can't use your no, TV. No, they have apps on the TV. There, there's buttons. Yeah, but those are they're... not easy to use. Yeah, do you know why they're not easy to use? Because you might have to log in and yeah, he doesn't and know how remember, to do that. Who can remember that? You have to open it. Like, it, well, how, you, how, how are you going to log into your apps on your phone? You did they're already once, logged in. And that's enough. He doesn't have to ever have to do it again. That's his logic. That's so it, 100% instead of, what Instead of using the app that's built into the TV that's like 4K, what you're going to do is diminish the quality of your stream and not be able to use your phone the entire time by stream it, by screen mirroring it from your phone to your TV? Oh, so you're anti-screen mirroring. Okay, no, well, no, that's not fine. You said that it got better sound, better picture. You're an idiot. Then what, then what you have on your late. phone? You're a decade late and you're an idiot on this. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> It's not better sound or better picture than on my phone. Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, yes. No, then, then the TV app, like then the app on the TV to watch the exact same thing. Yeah, but I don't. I wasn't talking about that. I was but talking you're about watching it on your TV. But it's just oh, it's a one stop shop in my hand. It's easier than having to manipulate the remotes and push this button and push that button. Then you got to log in. Then you got to wait. It's just a hassle. This is all one stop shopping. And it's just as good, if not better. And like why, I why said, would, okay, can you please explain how it would be better? It's just it's there instantaneously. For just like it would be on your that, TV. It's just Some that, it's might say you're using your phone as a universal remote. <laughs> That's true. Well, but it's not though. I'm using it like a phone, and I'm able to project the phone bigger on my television. Like watching TikToks on your TV rather than in your 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 hand on your phone. Game changing. Is it? You're Paul. wrong. Paul, yes, Paul, you have a comment on this? Hey, Tim. Do you see that yeah. uh, your phoner board in the desk right there? Yes. How many I times do you think you've looked at that in the desk over the last few years? Lots. Hundreds. W would it shock you to know that's screen mirrored onto it? <laughs> from a phone? Well, it's from our computer. It's <laughs> over there. Well, I'm not talking about cons computers. It's I'm the same about fucking my phone. thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about the iOS. The operating, the Apple operating system? I mean, yeah, we can run, it. Phone we can run it from our phone. We can run it from our phone if we wanted to. It's just TV, easier but, from the computer. But then our, t then our phone would be locked up. You wouldn't be able to use your phone. And, uh, and it would probably diminish yeah, the quality okay. because a phone isn't really supposed to project to a, a large screen TV in the same way. Well, my phone is made to do that. Well, you just it probably has don't the notice functionality because I have to help you put like your, your earpiece in every single week. Like these are, yeah, I, I like that things. you're over a oh, decade. Look, I'm not, you're over a decade late to this. This is amazing. And you're, you're, and you're, and you're this giving this you and were... you're giving it out as hot tips to the people. <laughs> You're, this you're is later this, on this. I guarantee you're... you, people don't know about this. You, some do, obviously. I guarantee you, a lot of people are going to hear this and go, "I have got to I, try this." But we no will one see. in our audience, no maybe, one who maybe there, to there this could show be some. Listen, there, there could be someone out there that is absolutely correct. But I want to hear from you, people out there. Yes or no? Did you know about screen mirroring before Tim just told you? I want to hear it in the comment section. And maybe Tim, Tim. you'll be correct. There'll be one person who's like, "Well, just I don't it's, know." What it's that also is. buried. On your phone. It's like, not you buried. It, it's right next to the fucking it. everything that you use all the time. It's right below the Wi-Fi button. Run a poll. Run a poll on Twitter right now and we'll look at the results. Yeah, do, do, you, do you know what squeak? Uh, here, screen I'll run it because is. coming from Tim, people will like sympathetically vote for, ah, with Tim. I'll run the poll and I'll let it go for one hour and we'll see where we're at. Do you know what screen sharing is? No, it's screen Tim, mirroring. This is, this yeah, is mirroring. worse... Than when you thought that the technology to like open the trunk of a car was new. I don't, I don't know. I, that that technology is still very cool, but I, I always get it wrong. Still, what? what? I'm always still inclined to want to push the trunk down or like reef the trunk up or 
Like you see those vans these days that have those handles where you just all you have to do is open the handle, let it go, and like the door automatically slides forward and back. It's pretty cool. What? You like a child? No, like I just I think it's really cool. I I, mm, I don't have an automobile like that, so you don't own a minivan. I no, I don't. I don't own any of these vehicles with all this new high tech tech for the most part. I mean. The car I do drive has Bluetooth and everything, but it doesn't have, like, all the bells and whistles. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I was running the poll. Did you say that you were really impressed by the minivan door that slides open by itself? Yeah, that's Again, really cool. That's also technology that's been in minivans for, like, 20 years. Yeah, but I haven't encountered it. What? So, to me, it might as well not have existed, because if I'm not interacting with it, what's the point? Oh, that's but really, you that's really also, a main character way of thinking. Anytime I ask you or try to make fun of you, you always claim that you're an early adopter. Of I technology. try to be. I try to be. I kind of thought I was here. <laughs> like I didn't. I mean, I did not know that. There's no way this is. By the way, there's no way this is ten years old. That seems impossible. Well, you're right. It's, I don't know it's, how it's, it would it's, be possible. It's, it's over ten years old. I don't know how it would be possible for me to not have encountered it over the last eleven years. Like. I'm not the most tech savvy. You, you did granted, encounter it. I just told I you at our football with... draft every year we do this. <laughs> but no one ever said to me they were screen mirroring. Tim, you're like a no child. No one bothered to show me how it was done. You're like a child who puts french fries in their hamburger and thinks they invented that. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> okay. Um... That, that Here a... I am just trying to give helpful tips to the people who are going through a tough time when there isn't good network TVs on. And all you can do is to say, everybody already knows about this, and it's not a very good idea anyway. We should ban screen mirroring. That's what that's that's the, res the response I basically got. What's it like to live in the 80s as a future person? <laughs> oh, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm using this technology. You are now. Yeah, because someone spent the time to show me how it worked. Again, I might be more pathetic, but you are more insane. I don't know how that. And could you come might across. be equally pathetic. <laughs> I, I, I put out the poll, and there's one comment that came, and there's only one response. It just says, "Currently, seven percent of people are lying to hopefully get Tim Anderson a victory." I didn't even put your name in it, and people know what this is about. <laughs> how stupid this take is. <laughs> but I know about screen screen mirroring now. Where were you the last decade? Paul, yes. Did I mean, the person tell you like that that they can spy on you through this though? That's true. They can spy on me. Yeah, yeah. Who can spy? Like on Like you me? become you become like uh, like they they're able to notice your device and they may be able to see you. They through already the TV. do that with my phone. No, no. But I it, turn my phone like, let's, on and my let, app already let's tells say, me. Let's where say Tim that you invited me over to your house and I went on your Wi-Fi network. Anytime that you screen mirror, I can see exactly what you're watching because I too have that password of your Wi-Fi. So anyone that can like hack into it can watch like, watch you. Well, you know what? They're going to be really bored then. You're just beaten off to TikToks. They're gonna be no. Are you sure? They're gonna be really why do you bored. Need, why do you need to see TikToks on a big screen? Because it's not about the big screen. Honestly, it's about not having to hold the phone in your hand the whole time. You, so why you, would you be watching on your phone? That's how people consume TikTok. I bet you ninety-eight oh, percent yes. of people consume that content. Sorry, that I thought you meant like long-form Netflix. Uh... No, those I watch on my computer. Why would Again, you just cast also... that to your TV then? I don't think I can cast it from my computer. Dude. We, <laughs> dude. My computer's not my phone. It doesn't have a button like that. <laughs> <laughs> they might be able to see your uh they might be able to see your McDonald's reward points and steal them though. You gotta be careful That's about true. that. They can have I've been your figuring other, out they can, they I, can I've can been looking Jeff at the, from there. At the expiry date of all the recent coops, and they all end around the same day, so I know what that means. I now know the date. What does that mean? Well, we know what date the, the contest is going to start. Oh, you think McDonald's start. starts when these current run of coupons? I think the, Monopoly I think starts when this all these run of coupons coops? are strategically scheduled to end on October third. So that tells me October fourth is all systems go. <laughs> are you going to take the first week off again to give your natives a chance? 
I don't know what I'm going to... I'd like to think that I'm not going to play at all. <laughs> but I don't want to lie to myself. Either. But the worst thing you can do is waste a week. This like is it. I have, to, I have to make a decision before it begins and decide whether... Again, this all goes back to why they need to have a system where I can just be able to buy stickers. And then you can donate that money to a charity of their choice. Like I'll pay the money that it would cost to buy three quarter pounders or whatever. You could walk well, why, 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 Hold, hold you on. Could... Why would they donate the money? They don't well, donate. I'm not they don't, they don't purchasing the food. Well, you're purchasing the stickers. Yeah. yeah so in, 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 or, in order to purchase the stickers, you need to purchase the food, which is money that they don't give away to charity. They keep for themselves. You want to be a real mensch? Like, just buy five combos, show up at a work site, and say, lunch, here's lunch, boys, but I need the stickers. Can I take the stickers off before I give it to them? No, that's Yeah, weird. and they'll no, be that's, like, that's thanks weird. for that's, lunch. No, that's real weird. Someone showed up, like, what else did you tamper with with my food? You weirdo? <laughs> this random fucking no, person showing up them with this... ripped off stickers from McDonald's. Like, I don't even want the food. Here, have this Coke. It's like, uh, You make it sound no. like when Elaine was trying to give away the muffin stumps. Yes, exactly. So you can buy the family meal. The family meal. You, you mean, calling it you mean, It's not called the family meal. It's called a cuss combo for one. Well, look, Kenny went through the same. Kenny had a great tweet on Sunday. He bought the popcorn shrimp, and it was the, quote, family's pack, which he was going to have just for himself, and he understood how isolating that feels. <laughs> Notable non-overeater Kenny Kim. <laughs> could be worse. I could have ordered oysters. What? Nah, I'm just making fun. Of what? You? No, oysters. That seems to be a topic of heated conversation on your other you, show. Your your like pullbacks here to get the deflecting the attention off you are just really bizarre today. And I look, thought I, I came I, out I, here to give I, people I, a helpful I tip. I thought that you were doing a bit on the screen mirroring thing, and it wasn't a bit. That's amazing. No, I learned about it on Friday night. It was this, really cool. This has to be the most, and I, I think I've said this a few times, but the most out of touch you've ever seen with anything. No way. I'm in touch. I'm I'm actually in touch with it. I actually know what we're doing. Like I get it. You do Can now. I give a real life tip? Sure. A real life tip. And I don't know, maybe people know this, like screen mirroring. <laughs> but again, like me and my wife, well, my wife is having our third child, so it means a lot of doctor's appointments and the whole roundabout again. You're always like, how do I see the doctor and not wait? Like, how is that possible to see the doctor and not wait? I'll book the morning appointment. Everything will be fine. Wrong. You want to see the doctor and not wait. Late. These are like tips you get from the secretary when you're late. having a third kid. No, not be late. You ask for the first appointment after their lunch. Oh. You will. Perfect. You're in Literally, it is like a godsend tip that my wife has discovered. On, I wish you knew it on our first child. But any time, you, if you do not want to wait, the appointment after lunch is the gold star. You will not wait appointment. You're welcome. I make up for Tim's screen mirroring bullshit. Cuss corner. <laughs> I don't know when this sport became a thing pickleball i'm not following it no but i i've been getting a lot of tiktoks about it and i think it's the hardest thing and i don't understand i like to think about what the it's professional slapping competition oh yeah which it's, paul's all over this stuff, stuff is so Power great slap. this is great then paul can sort of elucidate what is how is this possibly legal how do you get into slapping another man across the face as hard as you can? And then what's the strategy here? Do you want to go always first because you want to set the tone? Or do you want to go second because you have the psychological advantage if you uh, it, if you withstand the first slap? How do you decide how many sort of like three taps you get to make before you make the slap? I just think it's the most ridiculously hard thing. And it's crazy. How is it legal? And like, what's the way to win? Other than just be strong, like I, I, I'm fascinated by it. Yes, Paul. I don't know the rules on this, but Tim, what else are you searching that professional slap fighting is coming up for you? I have no idea why this is coming up, but uh, I've just seen a bunch of these, like knockout slaps. And I was like, this is this. 
How is this not taking place on a yacht in international waters? Does, does it work snake draft style? Like if you slap first, does the other person then get two slaps? Paul would be the expert here, not me. I'm asking. Paul? I'm like like historically out on Dana White power slap. I think it's really dumb as well. Um, most of the time it takes place in Russia and they're like, <laughs> it's not. There are no rules. And then Dana White saw like it on like TikTok and all that other stuff coming from Russia and was like, I can try to make some money off of this. I think it's really sad. I don't like the fact that like people aren't able to defend themselves. Uh, to answer Tim's question, I think you'd probably want to slap first, considering you could just knock out your opponent. And uh, what else was I going to say? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's. The reason why it's probably legal is because the Nevada State Athletic Commission needs the UFC so badly. They pay them so much money every single year that uh, I don't think this would be really allowed anywhere else, but the UFC holds it in its own venue in Las Vegas, so they kind of get a pass. But I don't think it should really... Yeah. Like, I would be so sad if I... You know, my unborn children was just like, hey, dad, I'm going to be a power slapper. I would, I would disown that kid on the spot. No, well, uh, no game credits for you. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> gruel. Why? Only eating gruel moving forward. Sorry. How do you get into slapping like this? It's just I don't understand how you get into it. Probably. And the fact that. <sighs> probably heavy drug addiction. Like, it was funny. They actually. These guys all look like they're in great shape. A bunch of these. No, they don't. A bunch of these guys they don't look I, like they're addicts. A bunch of these guys, or there's a couple guys that like got booked for like, for 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 doing ice or whatever. Like there was like crystal meth. One guy like had like that. crystal meth. One guy had coke, and it's just like I feel like you're by by the Nevada State Athletic Commission like cutting these people out. It's like you're cutting into a lot of the guys who would actually sign up for this by cutting out people who need it for like their next drug fix. Like it's super low. I'm not. I am it seems famously incredibly out low. Like in a boxing match, if you can't defend yourself in a fight, the referee ends the fight. And yet these guys are not. If you so much as flinch, it's a re-slap. You, well, you seem to know a lot of the rules here. How much are you watching a slap fighting? More than I should be, apparently. But it just it became a fascination with me. It's like, how is this a thing? Why are people doing this? Could I do this? And I thought, no, I probably couldn't do this. I mean, this is actually something that you could do. You could stand there and be slapped. That's something you could do. Well, yeah, but I would be knocked out, I feel. Oh, for sure. How do but you train? How do you train to I got, get I, to I got, slaps? I got I to gotta ask you. You think you'd be knocked out by another man slapping you, but Derrick Henry running you over, not a problem? I only have to tackle him one out of a hundred times. Again, after the first time, you're dead. And it's funny, we chatted about this the other night at football, and when I said it's, you know, one out of a hundred, a couple of people went, ah, no, 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 actually, no, no that is, that, not... that, I mean, you are now misremembering that. One person who was sitting next to you said, did say that initially, and then I asked him, like, well, what would be the criteria for this? And I was like, does he get to try to tackle him once every hundred day, like once a day for every hundred days? He's like, well, no, then he couldn't do it. I was like, well, what if you tried to tackle him ten times in a row? He's like, well, he couldn't do that either. And then he came around to our side, was like, yeah, you couldn't do it not the way I remember it. Because you, you don't listen. see on the internet on the internet this week where some guy tried to tackle Mark Ingram and he's like, I don't play, bro. That, like, that, he that, doesn't play. That, that was that a was that, that was a that was a setup. That was a stage thing to get to Mark Ingram. Okay. Well, that's what would happen too. to Tim. Yeah, I mean, yes, that would happen to Tim. Like, what do you mean you're gonna trip him? Like, that's your plan. Like, one time he's gonna fall in his shoelace is essentially your strategy. Yes, and, that, and legs, that you're not so. already in an ambulance from him running you over. <laughs> yeah, I'll have pads on too. <laughs> yeah, that does. I mean, guys, we just saw a guy. We saw multiple guys get concussions this week and much like, softer hits than you standing there, flat-footed, Derrick Henry running full speed into you. Well, I wouldn't be flat-footed. You but... would be. You don't move very fast. You once told me that yeah. you jumped when you didn't jump. You thought you would jump, jump, but you never got off the ground. Not fast, but I'm quick. Are you? I think so. So your shuttle time is better than your 40 is what you're saying? I, I would say it probably is. Well, we should film that. And we should film No, your I don't want time. to. Well, I mean, you're so good. You're so quick. You're not fast. You're quick. We know that you're not fast. We've seen the 40, but the shuttle time, we should film it. No. Is it because you're not really quick? I'm pretty quick, but... Okay, what, what's pretty quick? What, detracting from my well, Hold on. Point, Rel which is rel slapping. Relative to what? Quick relative to what? 
to them up to my speed. So I'm quicker than I am. Fast. So what you're saying, if you're the slow, like if you're one out of a hundred on the speed scale, you're like two out of a hundred. You're doubly as good. Well, I would have said like fifteen out of a hundred on what? On the quickness. Scale. Oh my god, no. Yeah. Like versus like the general population. Yeah, I would say I'd like eighty five percent of people or are against quicker like, than me, or against like people in old folks' homes. Uh, people, the whole population. I don't know about that. You were limping pretty badly after sitting down for an hour the other day. Oh, it was longer than that. It really wasn't. Yeah, it was. See, I wasn't limping badly either. I was a little stiff. People get stiff. It sounds like you're getting stiff watching these slap fights. Watching so many. I just don't understand they keep, they keep how people get into them. Because they're fucking smoking it, crystal meth and they need money. Uh, I mean, that actually is a good answer to my question. Paul? <laughs> it didn't occur to me. I'm just surprised that Jeff's being kind of quiet about this. Well, it's probably it's, Jeff has well, definitely he been gambling he, on Well, He doesn't fights. want a bad mouth it's, Rumble. Live, it's live and free on Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> and we know how Jeff feels about that type of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I those, those are his people. Those are Jeff's people. So I figured that uh, you'd be all about it. <laughs> Apologize to the bats. I don't have an opinion on it. I think it's pretty dumb. I, I don't know. I, I'm more interested. It's like the dudes doing like MMA in a phone booth against each other. To me, I find more entertaining than, than power slop or whatever it is. What's the lowest sport you can think of, Tim? Is it this? It might be. It might be. Would you say it's slapping the, each Would other? you say it is the opposite of dressage? Yes, there is no class or <laughs> elegance or, or any form of you know, sportsmanship. This is just one man strung out on hard drugs, slapping another as hard as he can. I do. I so like that when you describe it. Gambling addicts have to bet on it. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think addicts. What if you had a real edge? <laughs> then you have uh, sure okay my awareness of power slap i feel like comes from how defensive dana white has gotten when like people make fun of it and then he'll like look at our web impressions and say it's better <laughs> than the nhl i mean it's probably not that, wrong <laughs> that's my only recollection of the like i've never actually watched it it's a symptom it's, of a very sick society i mean is it any different than throwing people in a gladiator arena with tigers around them? Like in that documentary that, gladiator <laughs> The documentary. Yeah. That was awful too. I mean, so but somehow it's, it's, not it's, as it, low. It's, as it, it, it sounds this like, is lower. Well, that's because that's old timey in 2000 years. When you look back at slap fighting, they're like, Oh, how quaint. Maybe. The same way we look at bare knuckle boxing. I don't know this uh, uh, or the well, original that, UFC. Yeah, but that's where still, it was just like King of the Mountain. Well, I mean, bare knuckle boxing is still around, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, it's still around. But like, at least you're able to defend yourself. Where my problem is like yes. that you're not like you literally have to stand there and take some guy's shot as hard. It's not really a slap. You're basically using like the heel of your of your your hand and trying to like knock the other guy out. You know what I mean? Like, you're not slapping with your fingers. Like, you don't hear a big slap. It's more of a thud. You're trying to knock somebody out, and they're not allowed to defend themselves. Like, that's why it's like <laughs> bare-knuckle boxing, sure, it gets bloody and stuff, but, like, at least you're allowed to defend yourself. Like, that's where I have problems with it. There's, exactly. With Lane and Pete bare-knuckle boxed, at least there was some class to it. Oh, it seemed, uh, they it, it, the, it seemed very the classy. Exactly. Because they were doing it 1920s style. That's the way to do it. I, I I don't think that people do that part of the bare knuckle box. Do they do? Do they still line up like this, Paul, or do they line up like a boxer like this? Uh, yeah, I mean the people with like twisty mustaches probably line up the way that you were. Yeah, like they lift they lift weights, but they lift the weights that are triangle weights, not like you know what we have today. Well, it gets you into the right shape for fisticuffs. I guess so. I guess that would be the case. I'm trying to think of the, like anything else. No, it probably is like the lowest thing. I'm like. Well, I mean, like, like there are there are other things, but like they're already well known as illegal, like animal fighting. Yes, that's that's where I was going with it. Yes, Michael Vick really shook that off, didn't he? Do you think they could make that episode of Seinfeld anymore? Which one? Like, could a show do that now? Oh, the, oh, the, 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 the little, little Jerry. Jerry episode. 
You think they could make like? Do you think like if a big like network sitcom wanted to make a, a episode about that, probably wouldn't get by standards and practices. Before, no, I don't think it would either. Yeah, yeah but it, it would ju- it would just be an episode of something on FX at this point. Then, like that's the difference. You're like, probably right. Like, the yeah. the the shows like the high quality shows from network TV in the '90s just aren't on network TV anymore. They're on HBO. They're on Showtime. They're on FX. They're on the Netflix or whatever. So yeah, you could. Dude, okay. I got a buddy who's a writer. Man, trouble, trouble. He's in trouble? He's, no, he's, he's okay because his, his dad's really wealthy, so he's fine. <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah, he's been on strike for like four months. Can't do anything. That sucks. You can start a podcast. Could, yeah. That's what a lot of people are doing is just starting podcasts. It seems to be the move. All right. Anything else you got? No, nope, that's what I have for this week. I did have something. I had something I had a note from Paul here. To ask Paul about assholes at dog parks, but maybe that's for a different time. Oh, no. Did we ever talk about the universal remote? I wanted to talk about that. Did we talk about this? What? J- Jeff, did we talk about the universal remote? Am I supposed to know what we're talking about? No, if you don't, that means we had, that we haven't brought it up. That Cus didn't know that universal remotes existed. That seems aligned with like cuss to not know that a more efficient, convenient thing exists than the five remote. I have two remotes and it's just as convenient as the high dudgeon stuff that you had to do to put all it on one super remote. I'm fine. Thank you. But you were compl- one turns on the power and deals with the ball. That's got seven TVs. So the universal remote, like it's, a and he's got multiple remotes. I, well, I, I do have multiple multiple remotes here, and it's it's not convenient whatsoever. But you didn't know that they existed. Well, no, because how can my remote know what kind of TV I have? You punch in the code. Or how can my TV know what my cable box is? I don't understand it. The remotes figure it out. You just yeah. Well, them. apparently, but I you know what? Why well, have one little remote that does the power and the volume and the muting, and another remote that does all the cable box? And I you know what? I'm fine. But you I weren't fine. Surprised. You were complaining about this. This is why it came up. I don't know how it came up. I, That's I how I, that, I just I when you say you don't know how it came up, I just told you how it came up, and then you just pretended like you didn't hear me again. Well, I just I, I, okay. I'll take you at your word if you say that's what happened. That's what but happened. You, but I I don't find it that inconvenient as a rule. You were you complaining about like how inconvenient it was. You could buttons. you you couldn't find one of the remotes. This was the problem. Well, I suppose that would be a problem. Yes, and I'm sure I did find it, but like. I don't, I don't see the need for a universal remote. I don't see the need for it. It's not that much more work to use no, no. a second remote. I don't think there's much of a conversation here other than like the saddest part about this. It's not sad, but Tim considers himself like an early adopter of technology. I am an early adopter. No, you didn't even know universal remotes have been around for 30 years. <laughs> this is what we said. I've never seen a converter like that. What I have is the little tiny one for the TV and a bigger one for the cable box. uh, And they they work great. What it also comes to, like, you don't have surround sound or anything like that. Like, there's another advantage of the universal. No, I don't. You can program everything into that as well. You can just control I don't know how to do that. I don't need the surround sound. I have good Well, of course you don't know how to do it because you didn't even know this remote existed, despite the fact that it's been around for four decades. Go ahead. Have your one big jumbo remote if you want and be proud of it i'm fine but you weren't I'm fine okay. this was the it. problem now you're pretending like this never existed i'm just saying i don't think it's a big deal it was a big deal you were freaking out about it i doubt i was freaking out this, i'm sure i expressed some level of edgy talk you, you were having annoyance. a meltdown like you do about these I'm things i'm not the type to melt down about things Really? How well am I handling the last 24 hours? You're I trying remarkably so well. All you're doing, well, we know what's really going on here. You're just trying not to lose to Jeff and most insane, but you locked that up on Sunday night. So I think that, you know, Jeff going line by line through his personal DMs to his close personal friend, Mr. Spanos, put him right, well back into the lead. I don't know, man. I mean, there's people who, listen, he owns, he's trying to talk to the, the owner of the Chargers. You're sitting by your freezer eating frozen mozzarella sticks. One time, I want you to that, know that, that's I one time like, too many. By the way, yeah, for one an adult, time too many for an adult. And I would not pepper the someone's power outage. 
that, 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 that's, that that's not an excuse. Re- <laughs> yeah, it's not an excuse. It's actually revolting. Did you have nothing else to eat? And it was like two hours after the power went out, you said, right? It was like not even bacon bits. Yeah. No, it just it was on top of the pile. So that's nothing. what I picked up. I wanted them. We're fine. I just wouldn't eat them again. I will say with the universal remote. Dumb. I have seen many people who think they have these like great, incredible setups, fancy everything, and they're at war with this universal remote. Like I believe in real life. No doubt. It's more trouble than it's worth. I don't doubt it. You know what? Not trouble. The remote that's designed for the thing that you're using it for. My Roku remote is designed for my Roku TV. And my Bell remote is designed for my Bell box. And you know what doesn't make a mistake? The remote that's for the thing it's supposed to be for. I don't need one big massive converter that does everything. You people have lost your minds. Well, the whole point would Thank be... Thank you for confirming you have, what I already thought, you which have, is that it's more trouble than it's worth. Is it more As trouble Jeff than it's worth, Jeff? He just told us that it was. No, 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 I no mean, that's not what he said. Can, Again, you're not listening to what he says. When you can get it working, it's great. But at times, like, you think you... you um, usually a universal remote is like champagne problems. It's like a guy complaining about his, like, the fancy speakers, the, like, multi-TV, the... Maybe the projection screen that can pop out of the ceiling. It's a lot that can go on. It can control the house stereo system. Yeah, Tim. The, 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 the point the, of the hold on. The point of this wasn't that you need to get a universal remote to turn your two remotes into one. That's not what we were saying. We were just laughing that you had never heard of this, and then you thought it was a great idea. You basically how this went was you invented a universal remote, and then we told you it existed, and then you didn't believe us. And he's an early technology adopter. Yeah, he's like Pete from Mad Men. He, he invented direct marketing. Someone else had already come up with it, but he also came up with the idea independently. After he had lost one well, of his remotes. Well, you wanted one want then. You said it was a great idea because you invented well, I it. I don't know what I said then. I don't know what I said then, but I'm saying what I'm going to say now, which is I don't want one. Do you know what you'd prefer? You'd prefer someone a servant beside you changing the channel for you adjusting the volume in the same way I'll you, don't tell want you what? even hit an elevator there was button. a there was a virtue and this is going to sound crazy but there was a virtue to being ha- to having to get up off the couch and walk over and punch in the number you are not that, that you fucking old i used uh, we used i had a floor model tv in my room when i was like 10 yeah, TV my, in for, your room when you were 10 how fancy yes we, it was one of those old-fashioned floor model TVs from my great-grandfather's, and you had to walk over and plug the number into the keypad in order for you to get... Uh, you have, First, you had the dial that went to 13, and you had to flip that to, I think, 4. And then you punched into the keypad uh, the, the channel that you wanted. And there was a real value in, like, you're picking a channel and exerting the effort. And, like, I don't know. There's, there's just, there was something, like... I don't know. A little bit more dedicated to that. So like what, you were going to watch the network you were on, uh, you know, and if you, it was no good, it, you, 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 you're really going to express your displeasure by physically having to get up and change the channel. I don't know. I, th- that There was something neat about that. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah. There was something neat and fun about that, that they don't exist anymore. No, I understand. People loved it so much. Exist. Yeah. It's, they don't exist. No, it's not. It's um, because it's not convenient. No. I do get that. I get that completely. But nevertheless, there was something. I don't know, better about it in some ways. Like you were really expressing your interest in a television channel by actually having to get up and change it. Like you were really, it's the same way that, you know, when you slam down a phone receiver on an irritated phone call, it's not the same thing as hitting the little red button on your cell phone. Tim, I was asked last week why you're so, this probably isn't the right word. This isn't the word that was used, but. Why you can't do anything? Like so mentioned, you can't log in to anything for yourself. You can't make a. You forbid to make a reservation. You forbid to um, speak to someone to order delivery. Like you're so. In some ways, you're so useless at like common tasks. I don't know. Or you forbid. I, I, I don't know that you're useless at them, but you forbid to do them. I don't know. I've never really had to do them. You're. Assistance, and I don't like you? doing. I just usually find a way not to have to do those sorts. You of do, things so and I can it's focus my energy. And, and it's really things. annoying. 
that you make everyone you know do all these things where you're in because you have like a meltdown. I, 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 I can't phone the it. Italian restaurant to make everyone. I can't do it. We're just not going out to eat. We can't do it. This happened. Do it. This happened the other night at the draft where you said, "Why don't you just Chrome cast this thing off your phone?" And I just said, "I can't do that." And then we. Have, I can't do that. I mean, you could. It's a button. Sure. Why are you afraid? I don't know how. To, why are you afraid of people? I'm not afraid of people. I'm just. I'm good. It, with you know why? What I'm I, doing. I know exactly why. It all just kind of came to me right now. You know why he's so afraid of people, Jeff? Because he can't slap them defenselessly, and that's why it keeps popping up on his TikTok. He's just <laughs> living what he really wants to do on TikTok. I would be so terrified, not of slapping someone, but of when my slap doesn't knock them out. But you wouldn't. But like, how what do you I would book, have to be How do you book things that like I get like you're the friends you're going out for dinner with can book the reservation. The friends you're golfing with can book the tea time. How do you say like schedule an appointment to take your car in for service? Like he just doesn't. It's, it's it's I have to no. I if someone won't make it for me, and oftentimes <laughs> those get made for me by other people. What? Uh, then it just it does. I'll like send a message to somebody, like to my dad or something, say, "Could you set me up a car appointment or whatever to get my oil change?" Uh, but if he can't or or isn't able to, then I I summon up the strength to to call the phone number and get a time. And how do you feel after? Like exhausted? Like yes, I, I hate it. I'm like, thank God that's over with. Like it's a real anxiety. Like thank goodness I'm done with that now. And like, if I know the place doesn't open until nine and I'm up at seven, they're like, I'm going to think about it for two hours. So I have to do it. What? Oh yeah. I hate doing that kind of stuff. I hate it. I wish it was just done for me. You know, what would really help you with all of this stuff, learning how to use the internet or an app. I don't trust it though. <laughs> like that it won't confirm your appointment. So like, what about just, a haircut? Well, there, I get my haircut from somebody that I get the, I make the appointment on my way out of the last haircut I just had. Which is the worst so fucking like thing. It's like, it's, it's like when the assholes at the dentist are like, well, are you good six months from now on Wednesday at 11? That's how I make my, that's how I make, that's that's how I make, about? I have no that's fucking clue. Exactly, that's exactly how I make my dentist appointments. I have one coming up next week because back in March, they're like, are you available on the 20th of September? And I said, yeah, I'll endeavor to be. <laughs> Pencil me in. I just tell I, them pencil me in anywhere. If I need to change it, I will. Yeah, but I can't like, give you my schedule for September right now. My schedule for September is that I'm free because it's you know, or now if like my my schedule for March is that I'm free because it's March and there's nothing that in my life six months from now that you know probably I can't do on a Wednesday at eleven a.m. You don't know when those underground slap fights are going to come up. Look. The first rule of underground slap club is you don't talk about underground slap club. But everyone does talk about it. Yes, that's true. That's why it's a phony rule one and rule two, though. It's the whole point. Th yeah, that's that's fair. Family experience. Experience.